So we found the piece of land, we've checked it out in detail to ensure we understand any cost implications and we've worked out that we've got a deal. We then negotiated with the landowner a price that we're happy with and perhaps taken an option out on the land. We've submitted planning, we've gained the planning and now we've submitted the building control drawings. So uh, we don't actually need to wait until we get a building control approval to start the next process. And the next process is basically um, arranging everything. In other words, putting, get, getting the project into some sort of management concept. And so uh, what we're going to do in this video is talk about the various things that you need to do in terms of contractors, in terms of materials, and in terms of um, health and safety requirements and um, perhaps the hiring of equipment such as scaffolding and other plant that you may require. Hi, my name is Jim J. Davidson and I've been involved in property since 1973 when my brother and I purchased a flat in the student area of Edinburgh. Ever since then, I've been interested in property as a form of wealth creation. My current company, Fineside Developments, was established in 2003 and completed its first new build in 2006. And I hope you will join me on this journey as perhaps you start your own property journey. For context, we are in the plan it phase and the arrange stage. So why is this important? Well, in anything in life, the more time you're putting into planning, the better your project is going to run. Um, think of a, going on a diet. If you go on a diet and you don't know what you're going to eat tomorrow or you don't even know what you're going to eat today, there's less likelihood of you being able to stick to that diet. But if you've planned out your work week's meals and you know what your different meals are going to be for your breakfast, lunch and dinner and what snacks are going to be available and you've, and you've worked out the, the correct combinations of food, then you're much more likely to be successful. And so it is with, with this project, which is obviously involving large sums of money, you are able to then put the project in place and properly plan it and line people up. So the project management process is first of all identifying all the trades that you are going to need um, and, it, and what also you need to do is identify your build method. So are you going to build with block? Are you going to build with uh, timber? In other words, have a timber frame kit. If you're having a timber frame kit, are you going to go to a timber frame kit manufacturer or are you going to have a local joiner manufacture that and build it on site? In other words, that's what's often referred to as a stick build. Um, so there's a different process there. If you're going for a stick build as opposed to a timber frame kit, there's much more work to be done in terms of working out materials because you've got to source the materials, you've got to buy the materials and the joiner then needs to put it together. However, there can be significant cost savings in going this route. Um, but depending on your experience of this business, you may want to start with a timber frame kit and, and then progress to a stick build. Um, but that's a decision that you would have to make yourself. Um, so what are the sort of trades that you're going to need? Well, you're going to need a joiner, certainly, um, which is going to basically put up your your, your kit, um, even if it's a timber frame kit, you need somebody to erect that. You need somebody, you need them then to um, do all what we call the first fix stuff inside and we'll get into a bit more detail in that later on. You then need them to do the second fix, so that's all the finishings. You're going to need a plumber, you're going to need an electrician, you're going to need uh, uh, brick workers, uh, whether it's for block or whether it's for brick itself. You're going to need somebody to do the foundations. So you're going to need ground workers to do that. You're going to need them to excavate and clear the ground. Um, you're going to need um, uh, people to work on the roof. Um, sometimes joiners do this, um, or it can be you get a specialist a slater who's going to work on the roof. So you've got lots of trades there that are going to be involved in that. 
Um, so you need to be talking to those and asking them to prepare estimates. Now, it may be that the building warrant drawings get changed a little bit, uh, but it's a good time to actually get them because you can always then go back to them and ask them to refine it. Uh, the most cost effective way to build is to employ your subcontractors as a, on a labor only basis and for you to supply all the materials um, because when you ask a subcontractor to supply the materials, then they are going to add their margin on there because they're having to do additional work um, in the project. In other words, they're going to have to identify the materials, they're going to have to buy the materials, and they're going to have to wait to get paid for those materials. So um, by you doing that, you're relieving them of that responsibility. So they're quite entitled to add an additional amount. And it's usually about 20% onto the cost of the materials. Um, you also need a plaster, I didn't mention that. And then you need some people to do finishings like a carpet layer or somebody to, to, wear, uh, to, to, to lay the, the, the wooden floor, if that's what you're gonna have. You need perhaps a tiler uh, to, to, to lay tiles and ceramic tiles perhaps on the floor in the kitchen, the bathroom and on the walls, depending on what it finishes that, that, that you're going to need. So you need to then be uh, lining that up. You also then, once you identify who you're going to use in as those tradespeople, because you're probably going to get estimates from two or three different tradespeople, you then need to be putting that into a project management uh, table so as that you can identify the time scales. So you need to understand the sequencing um, of these different events and when they're and how long they're likely to take and how long uh, you need to in between. So you then are able to start lining up when those different people are going to start um, so as that they are available so as you can keep the build moving. Um, you can't expect them to just suddenly uh, uh, turn up a week after you've asked them to come. But if they know in advance, in two months time that you're likely going to want them at that particular time, then you're much more likely to have a much smoother project. Um, so I really, you have two choices. You either do it haphazardly and have no planning or you plan it. And to me, there is only one way forward to this. You have to plan it and have a smooth build. Uh, and it's important to move out of this build as quickly as possible and to sell this property so as you can move on to the next project. You also have a thing called CDM regulations. And this is essentially the health and safety uh, aspect of building. Obviously building is a, a dangerous activity and there are many things that you can go wrong if you don't have the right processes in place. Not only do you have to have the right processes in place, you have to record this information. So there is a, a whole lot of regulations. There is, uh, before you uh, start, you have to prepare the regulations and how you're going to handle different situations, who you're going to use to, as different contractors, what their responsibilities are, and how you're going to mitigate the risk. Uh, uh, also, uh, and this sort of like ties in with the CDM regulations, um, uh, you're going to have scaffolding, which you're going to hire, but also you're going to be have some certain responsibilities to have that scaffolding inspected on a weekly basis. Uh, it's a fairly complex uh, subject. You can hire a specialist uh, to actually undertake the preparing of these documents for probably around about £500 plus VAT. Uh, it's not an unreasonable amount because they are fairly complex. Uh, if you're doing a very simple build, there are some apps online where you can actually uh, walk you through a step-by-step -step process. But if you're getting into larger sites, then you certainly need to have a much more comprehensive plan. So why not sign up for our app and where you've got lots of more free content, which is ever ex going to be ever expanding. And um, also we're looking to develop a forum so you're able to ask questions and consult with other members um, in the forum and get your answers uh, or get your questions answered, should I say. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos, then click to watch the next video. Please remember to visit our website at builditandprosper.com to get our app or click on the button on the YouTube header if you're on desktop.